Welcome everyone. Uh, we are here today to hear about the Association of Perioperative Registered Nurses uh, eGuidelines Plus. Formerly you may have known it as the AORN Facility Reference Centre. My name is Angela Osterreicher and I'm with the WRHA Virtual Library and the library, in case you're not fully aware, is your library for WRHA staff, eligible community health agencies, and personal care home employees. We provide access to an array of electronic resources now, so that would be ebooks, e journals, uh, and databases. We also still provide all of our regular library services, such as literature searches, document delivery, education, and training. So our objectives for today are to learn about what is the AORN eGuideline Plus exactly about, how to navigate to it, and also to provide a few key features, uh, just to go over the key features that it provides so that you know what it has and how to, to navigate through those. So what it is, according to their website, uh, is the eGuideline Plus is the online AORN guidelines for perioperative practice that allows hospitals, ambulatory surgery clinics or centers and health systems to quickly and easily access evidence-based clinical support to improve patient safety and quality outcomes. Uh, that's a little bit of a mouthful there. So what exactly are we talking about? It is quite, it has quite a bit of information in it, as you can see by this quick look. This is some of the things that we'll be going through. And I was a little overwhelmed when I first looked at it and thought, what exactly is this about? It is basically the online home for the evidence-based AORN guidelines for perioperative practice. That's the first thing in the list there. Plus it has all these other integrated tools and resources for quick answers to your perioperative needs or questions. So to navigate to this resource, I've listed the instructions here so that you'll have this, and I forgot to mention a few housekeeping things. This uh, presentation is being recorded, uh, and we will send, it will be posted on our website in a couple of days, and we'll send out the slide deck to you so that you'll have these instructions. So you don't have to feel that you have to jot this all down. Uh, also, uh, we're happy to take any requests for other topics uh, if you have any interest in, the, in listening to other topics as well. So these are the instructions that will be sent out to you. So you'll want to bookmark this URL that we have here. This is our home page and bookmark it or put it in favorites so that you can have quick and easy access to it. You would select resources on our from our main page and then go to the library tabs and under there uh, click on collection. You just have to scroll down a bit and select AORN eGuidelines Plus and at that point you're going to be asked to put in your WHA virtual library username and password. Uh, I also forgot to mention if you have any questions during the presentation please put them into the chat and I'll do my best to keep an eye on it and answer them otherwise at the end we'll also give you an opportunity to ask any questions. So once you log in this is the home page for the AORN eGuidelines Plus. So one thing uh, I want to point out is in the lower <coughs> excuse me uh, left hand corner there um, it indicates uh, what they've added new to the guidelines or updated. Uh, this info is, paste, is posted on their page, but a good idea would be to sign up for their monthly content alerts if you want to stay up to date with what's new in this, uh, in this resource. Up at the top there, you can create your own profile as I've done here. And what that allows you to do is create favorites that you can then access. So once you've logged in, any, a lot of the uh, various sections or pages will have stars on them. And if you click on that, that will be added to your favorite so that you'll have quick access to it. Otherwise, you can click on this search bar. If you know what you're looking for, you can enter terms in there and hopefully get to it quickly. 
Otherwise, they also have the, this menu bar here, which is what we'll be going through. So if we click on the first one, the guidelines, that brings you to the most current version of the AORN guidelines, which provides evidence-based recommendations for surgical and other invasive procedures. I'd like to point out before we continue on though that we, we're in the guidelines section, but there is this other tab here, which we'll look at in a few minutes. So remember that that tab exists there. For each guideline, you can choose either the full view or the quick view uh, by clicking on the heading or the quick view tab. On the right hand side under about guidelines is information about their evidence appraisal and rating process that they use for the guidelines. If you're logged in as I am, you're seeing the stars so that you could, at this point, click on one of them, put them into your favorites. So let's look at one in a bit more detail. If we scroll down and go down the list to hand eye hygiene and select it, this is what you will be seeing, the hand hygiene guideline. It opens up in in full book view, as you can see here, but then you have this other tab at the top as well, which is quick view. Or you have the option of using these, using these angle brackets for each section to open up that section for more detail. Back at the top here, you can expand all the sections right away or use those brackets, as I said. Uh, you can click on the contents, which uh, gives you the table of contents so that you could move to another section of the guideline. So if you wanted to jump to figures and tables, you could do that. And then, of course, as you continue along, you can see that you could print or share this resource as well. Uh, on the right hand side, for this hand hygiene guideline, you have related contents. So you can see the tools that are related to hand hygiene, all the frequently asked questions for hand hygiene, and what is not showing on this page further down is the AORN journal articles that are specific to this guideline. So let's open up that first one, fingernail and hand condition, just to get an idea of what it looks like. So here it provides the brief recommendation and you can select again the angle bracket for more detail. So let's take go back to that evidence table for each guideline by opening up that second tab that was on that first page uh, when we opened up guidelines. When we do that, as you can see here, we're in the evidence tables. It lists all the, I think there's 35 guidelines, and you can then download, if you click on download, you will enter into the AORN guideline for medication, medication safety evidence table, which is the one that I selected. You might need to, so at this point, as you can see, you have citation, the uh, full citation, the evidence type, so whether it's a systematic review, a meta-analysis, uh, this one's a guideline, this one they've deemed to be a, an expert opinion, qualitative, it could be you know, experimental, ones, non-experimental, quantitative ones. Uh, they indicate the sample size uh, for the population that they've used, uh, interventions, uh, control or comparison is provided if it's available, the outcome measures, and they provide the conclusions. And then along the right-hand edge, there is the cons I can hardly read it, consensus score. So that is uh, something that you can check on there, on that main page. You might need to consult the evidence appraisal and rating process that I pointed out earlier. So at a glance, if we continue on through the tabs, at a glance library was the next tab on the main page. And when you click on that, you get this drop down menu, which is anesthesia, medication, positioning, procedures, and skin prep. So what At A Glance Library is, it's illustrated step-by-step -step guides. So uh, if we click on, let's say, procedures, the next window that you would see are the uh, various subsections under procedures. 
and if I continue to click on transplant and then I click on, on again liver transplant, this is the procedures for liver transplant that you're provided. So you can go through the contents. Uh, I'll remind you that it does include images. We're not seeing one here, but it'll have images of tools, images of, you know, uh, you know how to position someone. So for most of them, they have the indications. Uh, they have procurement and handling, positioning and preparation, uh, workflow, procedural variations, possible complications, post-operative recovery, and they include their references as well. So quick and easy uh, information for you. So the next tab on the main page was tools. And this uh, information allows you to, to look for any tools. So if you wanted, uh, you know, job descriptions, you could go there, or if you're preparing it in service, you could look for in-service PowerPoints. So you can browse by tool type as they have here, or what I'm not showing on this page is down below, they have all the specific guidelines. So then you could actually go in by a guideline and then see what the associated tools are with it. So let's take a closer look at one of these uh, competency verification tools. This is what the page would look like. Uh, there was actually 152 results, which you can further narrow down by selecting, selecting the specific uh, guideline on the left-hand side. So the next page, uh, tab, I should say, on the main page was frequently asked questions. And under there, again, it's listed by uh, the various guidelines. And there are over 200 clinical FAQs. If you select any guideline, uh, it will list all the FAQs specific to that guideline. It provides you with a quick answer. It'll tell you what resources or references it used and the date it was last update, updated. The next tab was books. So these are uh, a few of the, are the books that they have. Uh, perioperative care of the COVID-19 patient is a new one, obviously very timely. Uh, core curriculum for the RNFA, guidelines and tools for the sterile processing team, the AORN guideline and FAQs for autologous tissue management, and the ambulatory surgery centers infection prevention policy and procedures. So, so these are some further tools uh, that they provide for you. And if we just take a look at the first one there, the COVID-19 textbook, this is what it looks like. So you have all the sections and you can easily uh, open each individual section. And again, I'm still logged in so I can, I can click on one of them and put them into my favorites. So the final tab was accreditation. Uh, the AORN, this brings you to the AORN compliance assistance. It is used to prepare for an accreditation survey visit. This, however, is an add-on subscription, which we have not purchased. You can view all the Joint Commission standards. You can view them by the four areas there, ambulatory, critical access hospital, hospital, office space surgery. And the fifth one was added by AORN, which is sterile processing. So if we were to open hospital and then uh, infection prevention and control standards, this is what you would see. So you would see the uh, standards themselves by the Joint Commission, but if you were trying to click on EP1 risk identification, at that point you would get a message indicating a subscription was needed. So what you can't see are the elements of, of performance for this Joint Commission standard. Uh, if that's something that you think your group would need, then certainly let our office know. Uh, anytime you have a request for resources, let us know. We're happy to take that information. If you can let us know what program areas does it support, how frequently, how frequently it would be used, who would access it. We'll pass that information on to our acquisitions librarian who would look at the cost and, ex and assess the benefit cost uh, for that and whether or not we, we have the funds to purchase it. 
So that is a really quick overview. I was not monitoring the chat very closely, but I don't see any questions there. Uh, if you're thinking of a question and you're typing it in, I'll just give you a few minutes. Uh, this last page has our, our uh, URL on it. So as I said, please bookmark that or put it in your favorites. You have our email and our phone number. You have my email if you have any questions. Anytime you're on our website, if you see that ask us symbol up at the top right there, you can click on it and speak to someone uh, right away uh, through instant messaging. And a good idea is to sign up for a WHA virtual library newsletter. That way you'll keep on top of what we have new in the library, what new resources or databases that we've acquired. Also, uh, any of the webinars that we put on will be listed there as well so that you'll hear about them. And again, anytime you have questions, uh, please feel free to contact us. And if you have any suggestions for other uh, webinars, we'd be happy to hear from you. I'll just give you a few seconds. Uh, I don't see anyone put it th anything into the chat box. So at this point, I will say thank you very much for joining us. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and bye, bye for now.